Hello, my name's Dr. Mohammed Sheikh. I'm a hepatology fellow at Royal Free in London, and we present our study about plasma exchange in acute liver failure, but using standard volumes, which we've labelled low volumes. Acute liver failure is associated with multi-organ failure and has high mortality. We've, it's been shown that high volume plasma exchange can improve survival by ameliorating the immune response. We have introduced standard volume plasma exchange at Royal Free and we wanted to do, and this is a retrospective single centre study looking to see if low volume plasma exchange is efficacious in acute liver failure. So our aim was that we studied all acute liver failure patients admitted to the Royal Free ICU between 2013 2018 and the use of plasma exchange was determined by the hepatologist in charge of the case. Daily volume exchange was 1.2 to 1.5 of the plasma volume and replacement food was either fresh frozen plasma or a combination of fresh frozen plasma, crystalloid and human albumin solution. Outcome measures included survival, physiological and biological parameters and we compared the survival data with historical cohort from our unit, so looking to see if there was any change in survival compared to a cohort of patients with ALF treated at our ICU between 2008 and to 2012. 58 patients were admitted with acute liver failure to the intensive care unit. The mean age was 40 and most of the patients who had plasma exchange ha had hyperacute liver failure, 74%, and the most common cause of that was acetaminophen. In patients that did not have PLEX, there was a high percentage of subacute liver failure. We stratified patients when analysing them according to whether they met King's College Broad Prognostic Criteria. Of the 58 patients, 37 met King's College Broad Prognostic Criteria. 24 of these were treated with PLEX, 11 were bridged to transplantation successfully, 5 survived and 8 died. We also used PLEX in 10, uh, in 10 out of 21 patients that did not meet King's College Prognostic Criteria because we thought they were sick enough to warrant um, use of PLEX. Coming on to the overall outcome, so first of all We'll talk about physiological uh, and organ function parameters. The most significant effect of plasma exchange was a reduction in vasopressor requirement. Before using PLEX, the median noradrenaline requirement was 0.25 micrograms per minute, micrograms per kilo per minute, and this reduced to 0.07 micrograms per kilogram per minute. There was no significant reduction in respiratory and renal support, there was a reduction in ammonia, but no reduction in the overall SOFA scores. Looking at survival, 70, of those listed for transplantation that met poor prognostic criteria, 70% um, uh, survived with low volume plasma exchange. Compared to the historical cohort, there's no difference because almost 70% of those survived. In those that met poor prognostic criteria, but did not have a transplant, it was precluded because of medical or psychosocial reasons, five out of eight survived. When we compare that to the historical cohort, eight out of 17 survived, which is 47%. Small numbers to come to any firm conclusion, but there's a signal that this may work in this group of patients. So in conclusion, although low volume plasma exchange does not overall improve liver transplant free survival there may be a signal that it may benefit people who are listed for not listed for transplantation low volume plex is associated with a significant reduction in vasopressor requirement and i think to move forward we need to do larger studies to see what the dose response uh, what the dose of plasma exchange should be in acute liver failure thank you